the time slice window. It's a retrospective method. It's analytical. We will not add a fragment or any additional activities in this method. It's an observational. It's both the same, analytical and observational. You observe the delay. These definitions, by the way, it's as per AACEI, Forensic Schedule Analysis 29R-03. It's maybe one of the best practices about Forensic Schedule Analysis. Delay analysis, it's very, very powerful, reliable. Many practitioners now trust it. So it's a window analysis. For example, the first window, let's assume that I am analyzing the first window when I have one delay event. I will use the baseline schedule because this is a first window. And my first window is from 1st of December, which is the start of the project until end of March. This is the end of the window. I want to show the planned work within this period as per baseline program, what I should have achieved during this period. So maybe the easiest option to do it in Promavera P6 is to use the option progress spotlight, this icon. So you click on the progress spotlight and you drag the yellow area up to 31st of March. This is the end of the window. And it will automatically highlight the activities here in the program of work, the corresponding you know, highlights to show the planned work within this period. And you, have, you already have your monthly update in hand. So for each highlighted activity, you want to extract the actual from the monthly update and show it for the highlighted area. This exercise is very different from the actual update itself. Because here in, in this exercise, I want to show the actual of what should have been done during this period. So if we assume that this is an X, the planned work during this period. So what is the actual of X? For the monthly update, it, we are showing the actual of the project. So for example, I'm only taking from the monthly update, I am taking the actual data for these activities only. But the monthly update itself, it can have it can have actual actually for other activities here, door frames, aluminum doors, but I will not take the actuals from the monthly update for these activities. I will only take the update for the highlighted activities. After you do this exercise, you run the program one day after the window end. Okay, because basically if you run it 31st of March, so the Permavera will understand that a date is actually you are running the program like 7 or 8 a.m. in the morning. So you are actually forecasting the work for the 31st, 31st of March itself. And if you are dealing with any update before, so if you run the program, 31st of March, you can see many activities it's scheduled at 31st of March because the day is not over yet. To go around it, you have to schedule the program one day after the window end the date, which is 1st of April. Run the program, you found, for example, you have 10 days of delay because of this exercise. Maybe the monthly update, it's something different. Maybe the same data date will give you something else because it takes into consideration other updates which you did not take into account. Like, for example, additional activities, but you are only analyzing. This is hypothetical, hypothetical, hypothetical approach. So you found 10 days. So what you want to do here is you take these highlighted activities and you go into Excel, you are showing the variance start date, variance finish date, and variance duration. We have now multiple scenarios we are going to deal with. The first one, for example, the, the contractor started the activity earlier than the planned date, but he finished late, so the activity is still in delay. Or maybe he started late, but he finished on time, or maybe he started late and finished late as well. So we have to give, you know, like the possible scenarios, variance start, variance finish, and variance duration. So why do I, so for me, the delay happen if the finish date is violated. So if you finish, the, the, if the actual finish is beyond the planned finish date, it is a delay by common sense. But why am I referring to the, to the duration, to the actual duration? Because after that, you have two segregate responsibilities now. So for example, I am, the planned duration is, is five days and the actual duration is 10 days. So out of 10 days, five days of duration as bare planned, you know, so it is not anyone's fault. I should have achieved the activity or I should have completed the activity within five days. So, but I am delayed by five additional days. So you have to investigate here that you have uh, three days caused by the employer, two days caused by the contractor. Three days 
which is your extension of time, two days is the concurrent delays. So you are actually doing it manual. It's an analytical and observational method. Okay. So you depend on the software only during the first part, but the software does not provide the entitlement because you are dealing with the as-built and the as-built information in Promovera does not show the, you know, the float, the longest path. It's very hard to extract this from a scheduling software such as Promovera. You give this analysis, so you have now the variance duration, you know uh, how many days owned by the employer default, for example, or additional order or employer's risk event in general, and how many days owned by the contractor. And for the second window, so this is for window number one, say, for example, the second window, it will be maybe end of April, one month after. So you use the same schedule. You have just prepared this program. So with the highlighted activities, with the same information, the same program you have just prepared, you use it for the second window. So again, you, you drag the progress spotlight at the end of April and you do the same exercise again. So you take the same activities and, you know, you do the same exercise. So at each window throughout the project, you are investigating the employer's delays and the contractor's delays. Okay, so advantages. It represents delays based on factual data. So I'm not, you know, assuming anything. I do not have a fragment. I will not show like hypothetical 90 days of material delivery while it will not take, you know, the same duration. Maybe it will take less. And also it shows interim delays at intervals, which is window, you know, this is a window. So disadvantages, it is not suitable for very large and complex projects. In this slide, so can you imagine how much work we have done just for one example, one window, just to explain it to you, one, three activities or spotlight. But if you are dealing with 10,000 activities and you are dealing with 24 windows, maybe for 24 months, which is the project duration. So can you imagine how much work will be involved to do this type of analysis for complex project and for very large project, it is not recommended. Assigned delays can be argued unless you have very good project records, you know, so if I want to assign three days delay to the employer and two days to the contractor, you have to have really good reason, you have to prove it, right? So this assigned delays can be argued sometimes, and it doesn't provide an alarm because you are dealing with as built information. You are having the conclusion here based on the actual information up to this date only. So the actual already happened, you know, it's... Uh, it's different from the time impact analysis where you are predicting or forecasting the delays. So it doesn't provide an alarm, which is a disadvantage. So the uses, you are analyzing actual progress. You do not have assumptions as we discussed before. You also have to have very, very good project records, which is rare to happen in construction projects. Everyone is just so busy, you know, doing his work. There is a lot of work to do. So it's very hard to get very good project records. So for example, let's go to, so for example, excavation activity, and you are analyzing the delays. So you are allocating three days delay to the employer. So for these three days, you have to, maybe for example, you had, you submitted your daily report and you show it, or you, you, you had a proof that there was a site of obstruction. F over these three days, maybe you have a site photo with data stamp attached with the daily report. There is any sort of communication or correspondences or records, such as minutes of meeting, a letter, an email or something. So we have to have this for all activities, which in my experience, it's a very, very hard task to achieve because I have found, you know, some situations like the employer wants time slice window, you know, but before you even start it, you have to know what you are going through, what is expected from you, what is waiting for you. It is not easy method. It takes a lot of, you are doing everything manual, you know, basically. So you have to have very good project records.